Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. In the past decade, there's only been a handful of new ATV and side-by-side -side models that have really stirred things up. There's only been a few that had people not just talking, but getting into heated debates about what they would be long before they were even revealed. The YXC1000R might just be at the top of this list. Yamaha fans have waited a long time, almost longer than anyone else, for the side-by-side -side we all knew Yamaha was capable of building. Now it's finally here, and it is all the things we knew Yamaha was capable of, and many we didn't even know we wanted. So the only questions left to be answered are, what is it, and why is it awesome? And we were kind of nailing down the actual concept, uh, you know, which direction we wanted to take it in. We wanted to build something that, you know, was unlike anything in the industry and something that really identified with a, a pure sport concept. The, the first thing was, you know, starting with power. So we knew we had to have, you know, a very high level of power, especially in, in a machine used in an environment like sand that really just robs a lot of horsepower. Uh, you know, a machine that is carrying two passengers, um, you know, so we just knew power was going to be a, a key characteristic of that. Being able to deliver that power in a way that is fun and exciting um, and also durable, um, you know, and, and one of the first elements that, you know, came up or the topics was automatic versus manual. Yamaha's DNA is very apparent in all aspects of the YXE. Most notably, its appearance, which was directly influenced by their sport ATV and sport motorcycle lineup. Yamaha spends a lot of time in the design phase thinking about color and graphics and the elements of how it looks. Um, our DNA is very important to us. We have two design companies that help assist managing our sort of look and feel. So this design phase started a long time ago and we wanted to make sure we included elements from our YZ, YFZ and Raptor programs because those are really the flagship models for, for dirt racing. If social media has taught us anything since the very first reveal of the YXE, it's that not everybody agrees on what a sexy side-by-side -side looks like. But whether you love or hate how the YXE looks, some of its features are about function, not appearance. For example, the concave nose of the YXE, which is one of the most polarizing aspects of its appearance, allows the driver to see the ground closer to the nose of the vehicle when cresting hills or dunes. Love it or hate it, it works. Of course, looks are just a tiny portion of the YXZ package. Most, if not all of you, really want to know more about that motor and drivetrain. What separates this vehicle are kind of three things. Um, the engine is new to the industry. It's a three-cylinder 998cc um, engine that produces about 115 horsepower. So you've got a high revving 10,500 RPM engine. Um, and that's great depending on how you connect it to the ground. So we've chosen to connect it through a manual but a sequential manual transmission, just like a, a motorcycle transmission. Um, and that allows us to put um, over 92, 93 percent of the power directly to the ground. So we're not losing energy through the driveline like you might through a CVT. So there's an energy loss benefit, but there's also the benefit where the driver controls the gear that you're in. One of those benefits would be in the bumps. This vehicle can accelerate through the bumps. If the bumps are long enough, you can switch from third to fourth to fifth gear and actually accelerate. CVTs really have trouble doing that because as they get airborne, they tend to upshift a little bit. Obviously, you know, you, when you talk about motor, you talk about horsepower, you talk about, you know, all of that. But really, you know, it's the characteristic, it's the, the torque and the power that we were really going for. You know, we needed a motor that had the, the low end grunt, had the torque to be able to pull this machine. Again, it's a, it's a fairly heavy machine. You know, and having that, that torque and that power to be able to do that was critical. Shifting gears in a side-by-side -side is something high performance side-by-side -side drivers have wondered about and we here at Dirt Tracks have talked about for many years. To say shifting gears in a side-by-side -side is fun would be a serious understatement. But there's a whole lot more to the sequential shift manual transmission found in the YXE than just it being fun. Why not a CVT, why not a belt system in this machine? Um, it goes back to, you know, Yamaha's durability standards. I mean, there's just no way when you're talking about the kind of horsepower that these machines are, are putting out, when they're in this environment, when it's 100 plus degrees out, from a Yamaha perspective, 
we would never put a customer in that situation to where they have to rely on a, on a piece of rubber uh, to live in all of those environments. It, it just, from our standards, it would never pass. A smart philosopher once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Translating that into side-by-side -side talk, if you have a great power package, you gotta have a great chassis to maintain control. So what's so great about the YXD's chassis? When you drive a machine out in this environment, it's a very harsh environment and it's a very unknown environment. It's not like a racetrack or a fixed trail system. I mean, when you drive out here, there is no trail, you just go. So, you know, we really focused on a suspension design that was very stable. And what we mean by that is there's not a lot of deflection in it. So we use rigid spherical bearings in the A-arm design. Uh, which allows basically zero flex. So when you're hitting, you know, those whoops, when you're hitting stumps and rocks and things out there, your tires stay true. They don't, they don't want to bounce and go from side to side. And that gives you a very consistent machine when you're going through the whoops, when you're going through the trail. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing that we really focused on. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Now that we have the YXZ and the wait for Yamaha's version of a pure sport side-by-side -side is finally over, we knew the question that needed to be answered was this. Why did it take so long? Uh, we do get asked uh, often why it took so long to bring this vehicle to market. Um, we have a long series of processes to maintain our quality, our durability, our reliability. Um, so what we've ended up doing is it, it took a while but it's really worth the wait because we're giving you a product that doesn't just raise the performance envelope, but you can rely on it day in and day out to not let you down. You can go faster than you've ever gone before in a vehicle like this and not worry about it failing on you. When you're dealing with something like this, uh, like the YXZ that has so many new and so many unique designs and features to it that really have never been validated before in any other vehicle, whether it be, you know, our design team or test team, um, you know, they spend just countless hours upon hours uh, validating and ensuring that it meets those, you know, crazy high levels that we have. I know all you Dirt Tracks viewers have been dying to get as much information on the YXE as you possibly can. And now, thanks to John and Travis, you know what it is and why it was built the way it was. But I also know that's simply not good enough for you. You expect more from us at Dirt Tracks. You want our opinions, you want our impressions, you want to know the truth about the YXZ. Now, normally we'd save this kind of information for a test ride later on, but because the YXZ is such a hot topic, we're going to bring you our first impressions right here today. So what do we think of the YXZ after thrashing on it for a few days? Well, we had the chance to ride our test units in multiple scenarios fire roads, dunes, and at our secret test track. So we got a good feel for what it can't do, can do, and does well. But it all has to be prefaced with this one point. The YXZ was never meant to be a do-all, great for everyone side-by-side. -side. It was designed and built with a specific type of rider and specific riding scenarios in mind. And this is good. As sport side-by-sides evolve, they inherently become more specialized. What makes a great trail vehicle doesn't necessarily work on the track, and what makes a great high-speed desert vehicle doesn't make a good mud runner. And this is not something to be upset or complain about. It is entirely possible the YXC is simply not the right side-by-side -side for you. With that said, anywhere you can hold a side-by-side -side wide open is a place the YXC shines. That three-cylinder engine is just so happy at 10,500 RPM. It's been designed to survive full throttle power shifts off the rev limiter all day long, and there's nothing more fun than doing just that. On the other hand, this three-cylinder engine does have a bit of a split personality. It can be short-shifted and lugged down low. And while it's not its intended habitat, I did take ours out on the trail, and it wasn't awful. Breaking out onto a fire road showed just how settled and stable this chassis is. Full-lot power slides in third and fourth gear required only one hand on the wheel. The direct connection between the wheels and the engine is immediately noticeable and makes controlling the chassis at high speeds more predictable. Also, the manual transmission allows you to downshift into a corner and get the rear end loose, then get right back on the gas to maintain a perfect slide. 
The combination of the settled chassis and precise power delivery to the rear wheels makes the YXZ extremely confidence-inspiring to drive fast on fire roads or out in the desert. On a track, shifting gears gets a little more technical. Counter-steering while railing a berm requires two hands on the wheel, but shifting requires you to remove one. This means you gotta be paying close attention and have your clutch and shift techniques dialed in. The YXZ's chassis and suspension are surprisingly plush. We expected it to be stiffer, more like a traditional double A-arm setup versus a three or five link, but it's not. It soaks up the really harsh stuff and large landings without transferring any harsh input to the driver. Ergonomically, the YXZ is nearly perfect. We love the seats, we love the legroom, the passenger grab handle is the best in the business. The frame mounted shoulder bolsters, they're not great. They do help lock you into the seat, but they also make you feel really crammed. In the desert, this vehicle is really at home. High speed running, climbing, running bulls, launching off Razorbacks, it can handle anything you might come across. Shifting gears on the flat ground is just plain awesome. Because you're on a flat surface, you can simply focus on the fun of pounded shifts. When it's time to start climbing though, you need to start thinking about what you're doing. And this is what makes the YXC so much fun in the desert. Let's be honest, anybody can point a CVT equipped side-by-side -side up the side of a dune and hold it wide open. That requires no special talent or ability. But when you have to be paying attention to when, where, and how you shift to help maintain your momentum, that keeps things interesting. And it's way more fun. Sure, you might miss a shift or shift early or shift late and have to turn out early, but that simply means you need to take another run and do better next time. There's a challenge to it. It requires skill and technique. At the end of the day, the YXZ is what it is. It's a vehicle for people who want a more involved riding experience. You have to want to shift gears. If you don't want to shift gears, or if you look at the YXZ and think to yourself, there's no way this thing will be any good where I live, it probably won't. And lucky for you, there are tons of other side-by-sides to choose from. But if you want a vehicle that will engage and challenge you and your driving abilities, then reward you with the thrill and excitement you can only get from full throttle upshifts, then using an early backshift to back yourself into a corner, we can't think of a vehicle that's more fun than the YXZ. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance. Your backyard just got bigger. As off-road enthusiasts, it's pretty natural for us to get the upgrade bug from one time to another. Whether it be our truck, our ATV, or even our side-by-side, -side, it's always important to start with high-quality products. The Razor 1000S is a new-to-market side-by-side this season, and while we've seen many variations of the Razor over the years, it's this ever-evolving platform that pushes the limits of cool aftermarket accessories. And with a quick call to Kimpex, we had everything we needed to make our 1000S more functional, more fun, well, and just plain old cool. My goal today is to show you a variety of functional accessories that you can add all at one time, like I'm gonna do today, or over the next while to build yourself up the ultimate rig. And that's the beauty of products like these. There's no need to buy them all at once. However, it does make for a finished look right away, but the option is yours. And how mild or wild you wanna go, you can always be sure your parts will bolt up cleanly, fit with precision and work together, no matter when you choose to do your install. Right away, the first complaint that I have and first accessory to make that complaint go away lower half doors, because they just look right. The Razor Half Door Extension is one of the cleanest looking accessories I've ever seen. Made of heavy duty steel and fitting clean with gaskets and tightly designed hardware means less of mother nature inside your driving cabin, keeping you clean and more security from things like branches intruding into your exposed legs. While we're talking about safety, many of you folks out there use your side-by-sides during the winter months and are looking for a little more protection from the elements. A combo front half windshield and full rear windshield will do a couple of things. Reduce dust caused by negative pressure, continue a flow of air thanks to the half windshield, and keep out the elements while still allowing for a seamless summer to winter use. A full windshield up front gets hot during the summer, but with a setup like this, you truly get the best of both worlds. Now with that completed, we're gonna do things a little bit different and add a roof, but along with the roof, we've got one extra piece that's just a little bit different. 
The Direction 2 roof is made of hair cell polyethylene and is also being five axis rotor cut for precise smooth edges. All hardware is coated and there's no drilling required. Before we call it a day, it's important we don't forget to light the way, and an LED light bar like this curved 32 inch will do precisely that. It's 6000K daylight color temp, rated for over 50,000 hours of use, and features spot beam center light and flood beams on both outer ends to maximize the spread of light. Now before we finish up, there's one more area I want to focus on, the rear of the Razor, where a lot can be done. The stock storage area is okay, but a Kimpex Expedition trunk, well, that's better. Offering 78 liters of capacity, a weatherproof lid seal, and open compartments for outside securement means it'll store all of your gear. Add to this a two gallon Rotopax fuel can, and you've got that little bit of extra fuel that's not so big it hinders, but just big enough to get you out if you venture too far. This is just a sampling of a few of the aftermarket parts available for our Polaris. At the end of the day, the possibilities truly are endless. But one thing that's for sure, no matter what parts you put on your side-by-side, -side, you're going to increase the fun, increase the functionality, and hey, it's going to look great too. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Algoma. That real. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer. Built for adventure. Oh, the Grizzly. The Grizzly and I have a long history. It was one of the very first vehicles I test drove when I started here on Dirt Tracks, and I've tested every model and iteration of the Grizzly since then. Which is a long list of vehicles. The Grizzly's seen countless alterations, improvements, and redesigns over the years, each one making it better than the last. But the reality of it is undeniable. The Grizzly still employs the exact same formula it did from day one. It's a formula that works. It's impossible to argue that if something ain't broke, you should even consider trying to fix it. You should just leave it alone. Since I've got such a long history with Yamaha's Grizz, I thought I'd change up this test ride just a bit. Get back to the basics, as it were, and simply tell you what I like about this new Grizzly and what I don't. That's it. First, I like the quality and reliability of Yamaha's Grizzly 700. While it's true that every part of this vehicle is different than the first 660, it can be relied upon to get you out and back every time, just like the original. This is an aspect of Yamaha vehicles that many repeat owners state as being part of their decision to continue to buy the Grizzly. Simply put, it can be counted on. I like how it rides and handles, but this wasn't always true. In fact, ride and handling was one of my biggest complaints for many years. But the Grizzly's tendency to roll over onto its outside front wheel during hard cornering has all but disappeared on the last two iterations. This improvement came with the first real bottom to top overhaul a few seasons ago. It was the first time the Grizzly had received a tangible update to its chassis and it made a huge difference. In 2016, handling gets even better, and along with better handling comes better ride quality. I like the ergonomics, I really do, and I feel like I shouldn't, because I've always preferred more ride-in style like what's found on a Polaris or a Can-Am. But the Grizzly has always fit me really well and has always been really comfortable to ride all day. With the addition of a headlight gauge pod on the new version, the view from the driver's seat has a way more high-end feel. Our Grizz has the added benefit of Yamaha's superb power steering system, which makes effort light and filters backfed input to the driver. If you're going to buy a Grizzly, get EPS. You won't regret it. I like how the Grizzly looks. This newest version is tough, but I've always liked how the Grizzly looks. Its high fenders and aggressive nose have always been very appealing to me. I also like the Grizzly's 4x4 system. It's easy to use, but more importantly, it's easy to understand. 2x4, 4x4, and 4x4 diff lock. Just flip some switches and you get exactly what you want. It's simple and it works. My last area of praise for the Grizzly is the clutches and transmission. Yamaha is literally writing the book on how a CVT with a secondary takeoff clutch should work. Likewise, their transmission is smooth, precise, and reliable. What I don't like? Well, this list may be shorter, but there are some important things on here nonetheless. First, the racks. You can disagree with me, and this is all about personal preference, but to me, the Grizzly's racks are not good enough. They have acceptable capacities, but put them beside any competitive ATV, and it's pretty hard to argue that they don't look cheap and aren't hard to use. The rest of the Grizzly has come so far, we think it's time for the racks to catch up. 
I do like the great big freshly reworked 708cc single found in our 2016 Grizzly. I really do. It's a fine motor that gets the job done and in reality provides more power than anyone actually needs. I just don't like that this is the only big bore engine Yamaha offers in their ATV lineup. Big bore single cylinders have power bands that are almost exclusively biased towards low end torque. But again, I'm not saying the 700 Grizzly is incapable due to its motor. On the other hand, this thing competes with vehicles that produce 70 plus horsepower and have power bands as wide as the Grand Canyon. If Yamaha offered another Grizzly with a higher horsepower twin, the 700 Grizzly would be completely acceptable as a lower cost option. But as the only option, it just ain't enough. My final two points about the 2016 Grizzly 700 are both positives. I may feel this 700 single is getting a little long in the tooth, but I do like that it's a light motor, which allows the Grizzly to be a very light ATV. Light is right. It's an old adage, but a good one and is still very true today. Finally, I like that the Grizzly 700 EPS is, relatively speaking, pretty affordable. The EPS model we have here retails for $96.99 US. When you consider all that there is to like, it becomes pretty clear the Grizzly is a great value. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Dirt Tracks TV's YouTube channel so you never miss another update.